welcome everyone to our second live stream uh, for our, from behind the system, creating a unified playground for design systems, documentation, and code-based prototyping, uh, together with uh, Lincoln Mitchell. Oh, where I need to continue. One moment, it's not working with me. Ah, your host for today, uh, it's Mike, uh, together with Esther and myself. Um, our, Mike is our chief evangelist, uh, Esther is our chief product, and I'm uh, for the product and community. Uh, but before we go into the live stream, uh, some housekeeping rules. Uh, this session will be recorded and will be available afterwards on our website, figmatokens.com. Uh, on the bottom, you can use the chat to everyone so everybody can see your question. Um, also, you can use the questions button and you can also upvote other questions if a question uh, is already asked and then we can uh, uh, answer that one at the end and in the Q&A. Uh, a reminder to please be kind and respectful to everyone. More information regarding this can be found on figmatokens.com slash code of conduct. Uh, keep an eye out on our channels uh, as always uh, for future live streams. And if you have any idea, ideas or suggestions, uh, please contact us at Figma, uh, support at figmatokens.com. Before we go into the talk, uh, first a word of Mike. Uh, so take it away, Mike. Sure. Uh, Link, I'll also just quickly check are you there? We can't see you yet. Um, yeah. Ah, there we go. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So I think. Uh, you know, I, I, I just want to set some context, uh, and some of you maybe have been following some of these conversations on our, on our Slack channel. Uh, you know, Link, Link has been going on for a while about his ideas on, on, on using Framer and Figma tokens and, and kind of creating this, this, you know, central stage for, you know, designers and engineers working together. Uh, I think it's a really interesting concept. Uh, you know, we've been, we've been playing with this concept for a while now. Um, and, and, and we're definitely pushing the boundaries of tools here, uh, you know, working on a proof of concept, pioneering something new. Um, yeah, and it's been really interesting. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to today's, to today's session. And um, yeah, excited to, to show you guys what, what Link and, and ourselves have been up to. So Link, uh, yeah, take it off. Hi everyone. Thanks uh, very much, Mike. Um, yeah, so I, I'll share my screen, shall I? There we go here. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit about my myself. Uh, who am I? I'm the design systems lead at Merkel in uh, Australia, New Zealand, NZ. I think we uh, can't Lincoln. see your screen link. You can't see my screen? Hang on. Not okay, yet. hang on. Okay, hang on. There we go, yeah. Okay, yeah, can you see my screen now? Much. Yep, there okay, we go. Cool, cool. All right, sorry about that, guys. All right, um, so I'm the design systems lead at Merkel um, ANZ. Um, I've been brought on board by uh, some uh, uh, someone called Dave Kalija. He's um, uh, the head of design there. Uh, previously, I was working at Breville, and I've had this kind of interesting journey where I've kind of been between design and, and development. Um, I... Uh, I found myself there because historically, you know, I've uh, been in the industry for, for over 30 years now, and I've always sort of had uh, some sort of half, one foot in code and, and one foot in design and always found it very useful to be able to kind of make stuff and iterate from there. Um, so there's my contact details for uh, later reference. Uh, what What's a design system lead do? Well, you know, in a very kind of, overall level of what I'm hoping to do at Merkel is to help small teams have a big impact. And by that, I mean, if we took a scenario, say like a free week um, sprint, for instance, first week would be setting up the developer, the workflow, introducing to this newer way of working and having design systems uh, drive that. Uh, week two would be uh, setting up the designer and introducing them to do that. They often, we kind of work in very kind of siloed uh, ways. And, um, I think that uh, a, a design and developer, you know, working closer, it's kind of a big, quite a big cultural kind of shift as well. Um, and in week three, I've said authors there, but it's really about anyone that kind of is about the content. Um, and it might be a documentation perspective, might be a user researcher, 
but I, I always find this kind of dynamic of having these three disciplines working closely together and a small multifunctional team is pretty good. I used to be one of these people, the designer or the developer, but um, I find design systems an interesting space because it uh, enables you to have uh, this holistic view, this way of seeing the world from a different perspective, pre-product. So you get the opportunity to look at multiple products and how they all are similar. And I think design and its very uh, root is about simplicity. It's about trying to um, see connections between things. And as a designer, you're kind of more in the weeds or a developer, you can get the opportunity to kind of see things at that higher level. So that's why I think design systems uh, lead uh, role was very appealing for me. Um, going to my next slide here. Why a design system? Um, I think just highlighting that again, because it enables creative individuals mostly uh, to maximize their idea scope at a macro and a micro level. Now, what I mean by that, it's easy to understand that maybe a designer is someone that um, would use something like Framer potentially and maximize the animation of mic micro interactions, et cetera. And that's an easy one to see, right? Like, yeah, and all the time we don't get opportunity to even to do that. We might go from Figma to Framer, uh, or someone might say, look, we don't have time for Framer, we'll just go straight to developers. Uh, but the macro one, I think is, more interesting because I've been in a situation many, many times where I'm working on a huge project and I'm seeing connections with things, but we're, we're in delivery. Even though we say we do discovery work, we're, there's always this tension to kind of get stuff done and out. you don't get an opportunity to play. You don't get an opportunity to kind of look at this kind of larger level. So for me, a design system lays the foundation that you can kind of like, and why me and Dave have aligned so much is that you know, it allows us to play. It gives us some time. You know, we're seeing increases in, in, in speed of being able to develop stuff. So that time saved can be invested into the creative activity at a micro or a macro level. Um, so yeah, my, my journey um, uh, to Figma tokens was good. I actually had an initial reservation. I don't know if anyone else had felt that way, but um, I was like, what's this Figma tokens thing about? You know, oh, that's in Figma, you know, like where's the code, you know? And then as soon as I opened it up and looked and I clicked on the tab that's there, which showed me the uh, Figma tokens JSON content, I thought, hmm, this seems interesting. Let me, let me give this a closer look. Uh, so 100% yes on Figma tokens for, for, for what I'd recommend it at Merkle. And we're still in our early days, you know, like um, there has been teams that's used it. We've already seen a 25, I'd say 30 to 40% increase in, in developer speed going through to AEM as a, a, a pretty cool workflow that can be bi-directional too. Uh, but um, it's not everything, right? There were some missing parts. And, and for me, it was a design system. It's not just a JSON file, right? Like there's, where's the code component? So I was sort of like, and that was my reluctancy to use Figma tokens. I go, like, well, why don't we just use Material UI or, or some other library like that, right? Because all the documentation is there and, and we can start with that. Uh, so then also the Figma tokens documentation, although it was great and I was kind of very happy to have that all appear inside Figma to auto generate in Figma, it was not really a full on documentation kind of CMS type of environment and couldn't really compete with zero height. Uh, you know, our clients are expecting a certain sort of level of documentation that everyone in the business can contribute. It's not just about the designer and their realm of documenting their design um, elements in Figma. But most importantly, and most discouraging at this point was like, I, I really kind of lose, started losing that connection with Framer. And I saw Framer as kind of central in a way, because Framer was, um, it's sort of like uh, how Figma tokens is to, is, is, is to Figma, uh, React is like that for Framer, you know, and, and it allows us to have bridge this gap between design and developer design and developer world, right? Framer is a design tool. Yeah, but you can actually inject React code into that. So it kind of feels like this halfway house. And that's why it excites someone like me that has a foot in each of those worlds. So here a little graphic on the right. We started, so I feel like we kind of took off a little bit at that point as the plane and between where we have code and design kind of connected together. And I was super, super excited by that. Um, but then I started to think, well, can I get these tokens in Framer? Because that's where I want them to be. I knew you could copy and paste stuff from uh, Fig Figma, but those tokens didn't come across. Uh, 
So I thought, okay, well, what can I, what can I do there? And um, so, uh, you know, you, you can, you can, um, you couldn't directly do this with Figma tokens, but you could import code components into Framer, and and, and those libraries of code components uh, can be tokenized before they get imported, right? You can have all of that happening, which is fantastic. And as a documentation side of it, your Framer just recently brought out Framer sites. It's probably been a few months and I kind of tuned out there for a little while with Framer because uh, I kind of shifted to Figma tokens and was desperate to try to find my way back. Uh, but Framer sites seem to be the key. And at the previous place I worked, it was, um, the developers were very much on board with kind of dropping the idea of using Storybook and other people had suggested me, a lot of developers had suggested me, hey, if we can put our components in frame, we don't need story, Storybook anymore. And I was 100% I was sold that the idea of pushing the use of Framer doesn't come from a design perspective, you know, because designers like, why would I use Framer? I've got Figma. But developers could use it as a replacement for documentation. And I saw that as a way in uh, to utilize this prototyping environment and maximize creativity while, while prototyping. Uh, so Framer as a, as a design system encourages prototyping at its core because it's a prototyping tool. And, and when we talk about prototyping, you know, like the promise of agile, right, was supposed to be that we can iterate together. But in reality, and if I work for a, a dev oriented company, it's all about development and design is something that is like aesthetics that if they've got time, they'll make it look pretty, right? Which is pretty degrading for a, for a design the designer, but it can work the other way. You can work for a big agency or something. I'm working with Merkle now. And, 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 and a lot of, a lot of design orientated companies don't really un understand the code side of it. And they might degrade that to a limited experience, which might be, you know, maybe, you know, oh, we don't know what it's going to, how, how it's developed, but, there's some guys in India that are gonna gonna do that for us, uh, and, or 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 it's just a small group of people that are working there. Um, and again, it can come from another perspective too, a, a business orientate perspective potentially. So just moving on, um, just reiterating what Mike said. You know, me and Mike are starting having some conversations right net right now, and he's sort of saying, "Who's this guy?" Lincoln keeps bugging me with all these things, saying he's got something amazing to show. And <laughs> so, so uh, uh, yeah. So, but but then when we start to speak, and we he realised that there was this connection. You know, he told me that originally, you know, there was code component, a, an idea about having code components, and they kind of you know, parked it a bit for a while because uh, Figma token sort of came, uh, I took more of a focus. Um, and they also had some experience with Framer sites, you know, the Figma token, oh, spell it wrong, sorry guys. Figmatokens.com is, is, uses Framer sites, which is pretty cool. Um, and also, you know, there was talk about, you know, Storybook, the integration with Storybook, Jan had done some work, but it wasn't quite complete. There was still needed some more work to be able to get that. Figma tokens happening in Storybook and then surfacing in something like Zero Height. So that kind of connection wasn't there. And, and that was a big problem for, for us because you know Zero Height just didn't play nice with all these tokens. It would absorb Figma tokens, but it wouldn't absorb um, Figma tokens via, uh, sorry, it would, yeah, Figma tokens like styles, via styles, but not Figma tokens from the plugin, so which has more than just the three styles: effects, start, text, and um, and colors. Uh, so, yeah, I was I was looking for a, a way to drop Storybook and put Framer into the into the frame. And as you can see on the and if I go back to that slide, there's documentation, there's code and design. You know, you keep seeing this popping up on my slides. The same. So we kind of had the same target. We had the same idea. So we went about kind of formulating what uh, what we would do, and and that's basically the title of this of this um, creating a unified playground for design systems. It's a playground because we're not it's a it's a way of having a design system, but use utilizing it to be able to use it in a real practical prototyping playgroundy sort of way, right? Um, and and I've highlighted the words design, documentation, and code. So. Um, that for the first demo, um, please let me know if timing wise we're okay. We're at quarter past now. So maybe yeah, the, all, good. all good. So the first demo, I'll just uh, flip my screen here. Um, okay. We'll go to here first of all.
So uh, the first one's really about just a little intro about how maybe some people in the audience don't know much about Figma tokens. Um, this is Figma tokens. It's a plugin that really just it extends the interface that you, you normally get inside Figma. And what we have here is the Chakra UI Figma kit. And um, Esther's done a great job of adding all the uh, tokenizing all of these. So it uh, is applied to here. And, and, and it's, quite, it's quite a complicated set here of all the different sets of tokens. Each of these is a JSON file. And um, if I just swip, swip, switch to here, you can see that's the code there, right? So that's all connected up to a repo and there's branching attached to the repo. All this was super exciting to me because, you know, it was this connection between design and dev and bi-directional. You're able to pull and push design decisions, you know, and all you really need to do is kind of work out this workflow between a designer and a developer, like, and get people, get them used to the idea because uh, it's quite jarring at first, but super powerful if you start to kill those silos. It's like a silo killer, right? Like same way Framer is a silo killer. And that's what you hear when people talk about innovation and all these companies, everyone talks about no silos, but when you get there, there's all these silos <laughs> everywhere. So this, this, is a, this, is, this addresses those concerns. And again, it's exciting for someone like me. Um, it also has all this documentation ability. I won't go into too much detail here, but there's ways of inspecting, doing deep inspects and as elements that you select, et cetera, right? Um, I think that was all I was supposed to show at this point. Um, Mike, did you want to say anything before I, or Esther, before I jump into Framer? No, I think we, we can go ahead with Framer, right? And then uh, okay, yeah, cool. start seeing the real thing. So yeah, so oh, well, I'll just zoom out for a moment. There's, there's all these ones that have been tokenized so far, right? And, and again, this project is a work in progress, right? We're not claiming to have this whole set thing done and dusted. Here you go, use it. You know, we're actually looking for people that are really interested in this space. And we found a number of people already that want to contribute. So there's a whole heap of yeah. components. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if I add one thing, right? So when we started yeah, this sure. exploration, uh, it might be interesting to mention that we're using Chakra UI, right? Uh, <clears throat> because, because when Link initially started talking about this, there, there, there was this, these multiple ideas, right? Do we use material UI? Do we use XYZ framework and, or, or maybe Chakra? Um, and then Esther and I actually, we, we had a conversation with, uh, with the Chakra team uh, and, and, and kind of, you know, understood what is the roadmap. And, and Chakra is also like uh, moving from being probably a UI library uh, to becoming a full-fledged um, a design systems framework. So we had a couple of conversations about their UI kit. Uh, you know, how about tokenizing it? How can we optimize the theming pipeline? So right now, Chakra has a, has a pretty decent support for theming. Uh, but then if you think about it, um, you know, in, in, in terms of like, how do I connect the pipeline, for example, from the Figma UI kit with Figma tokens to, to Chakra. Uh, when we started doing this, it didn't turn out to be really straightforward. So we had a couple of conversations with, with the Chakra guys and um, uh, or guy, I should say, I think it's really headed by Sejun. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so, so he was also really interested in this idea of, of <clears throat> you know, working together and creating a fully tokenized uh, Figma UI kit with Figma tokens that, that straight taps into uh, Chakra UI and would make it really easy. Mm. Mm. So I think where we are at right now, it's still in, in quite a prototype stage, right? This, the, we have tokenized the UI kit, but there, there's still stuff to be done. Uh, but I think, you know, in the near future, in the next couple of months, I think we'll be making some serious progress on getting like a, kind of a native integration between Ch Chakra UI and, and, and Figma tokens, mm -hmm. uh, which should make it really easy to build out like, you know, a base design system using Chakra and then, for example, using it in Framer, like how Link is going to show mm -hmm. right now. So I think that's probably what I yeah. want to add. Yeah, I also cool. think we have a quick question over here uh, from, from Lisa. I'm wondering, was design system with tokens... Uh, done before development otherwise i'd like to ask about implementation process how traumatic was the switch to token-based design systems from an engineering perspective um mm. yeah you, you want to yeah. take this one quickly link yeah no, sure no, sure uh, sure um well i mean uh, esther's going to show like a, a more of the kind of the code pipeline side of it 
But, um, you know, I was working uh, with a guy called Chris Shore at Merkel on, on a project and, you know, we had the integration with 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 AEM and, and uh, you know, the power of uh, Figma tokens, you know, to be able to take all those design decisions kind of took the weight off a lot of the developers, you know, they would get served yeah. up through the pipeline we, we got a series of tailwind mm -hmm. va variables, right, using style dictionary and those tailwind uh, um, so would variables or CSS variables, um, Maybe it was they maybe there were SAS variables. I can't remember. Sorry, it's been a little while, but they were just easy for them to just consume, right? Uh, and we and and anytime we'd push to the repo, you know, those would get updated, but there would be a controlled way of doing it. So the, the developers didn't get panicked by sort of you know designers suddenly having control. There was gateways to control it. Um, and certainly, you know, as people get more comfortable, you can have it bi-directional. But I, I think that a designer and a developer, you know, ideally, if they have these overlapping skills, they it's like a developer that is part designer or a designer that's part developer. Um, and, and I think that's when it works better. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. people may not necessarily get the power of the workflow and they won't benefit from the workflow as much. And it might be more jarring for them. Yeah. Does that help? I'd also yeah, like great. to add Thanks. that... Uh, that uh, um, uh, I, I, there was a guy, this guy Aaron that works at Merkle. He he's been, he loved the idea of Sharka and promoted it. And I was like, oh, a material UI, material UI. But he was talking about the flexibility. And when I studied him, the 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 guys at Figma Tokens and the community there talking about Chakra, plus also got uh, Simon um, uh, from um, Discord. He's uh, he uh, for Framer, he was interested in, in Chakra and and seemed to be keen on Figma tokens too. So it seems to have uh, there was a bit more of a swelling of uh, community influence or, or wanting to go down this road. So that's what we did. Great, thanks for that's answering right. the question, Link. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll move on to Framer then. Great. Okay, so uh, Framers are so cool. You know, it's got it's got this um, frame of sites element to it now. So right out of the box, I've got this kind of template that was there uh, called Design Systems, and I renamed it Focus because our design system at Merkle is is going to be called Focus. So there's no brand attached to it at the moment. I've just uh, anyone can grab this this uh, this template. Um, it's not mine, apart from the fact that I've just you know added our code components and bits and pieces in here too, right? So let me just play this for a moment, just to give you a flavor of, of, of what it looks like. It's quite pretty, the animations, etc. cetera. I did, uh, and a little bit of information about what a design system is from seeing it from this perspective. It, it really, uh, from a documentation perspective, it's really trying to uh, teach people how to use design at an organization. You know, maybe marketing are looking at it. Maybe, maybe it's a designer, maybe it's a developer. Uh, it could be a multitude of different sort of uh, audiences. So it needs to kind of cater from them from an introductory level. Maybe there's some sort of updates about what's been added, deleted, et cetera, feedback options to do certain things. And it, but it can be any, any way you want. But I think the, the problem for me with the word design system is that it tends to sort of feel like you're kind of, um, you're, you're, you're being dictated to. And a lot of designers or developers might push back and not want to use a design system because they don't feel like they have the freedom, right? Where it's almost, I don't want to rename that, you know, design creativity, whatever, you know, because it's about trying to enable creativity. Um, if I just bounce around this for a moment, we're on this, uh, the design page here. So if I go to design tokens, for instance, um, uh, all these tokens here are coming straight from the source code. And uh, you can basically, we've created a, co a code component in Framer. All the tokens are just coming in here. And Esther will show how uh, they can be dynamically edited uh, from, from Figma shortly. Um, if I go down to say um, uh, a component level, these are the components we're working on. They're all about a card. So I normally use a card as an example and then hand it across to other people who are working on a design uh, system to take over from me so they can build out their own design system. But this is kind of uh, the normal set that I would use. So all these com combined make a card component that is currently in a work of progress and then a layout component as a part of the card component as well. Um, so if I just uh, briefly just go through what that looks like, you know, it's just maybe a series of sizes, etc., headers, etc. But all of these are coming in through 
through Figma tokens uh, and Chakra UI code component, which Chakra's in React, right? So if it took something like this, for instance, you know, you could you could go in here and change this to primary, and then this would be changed here. So some sort of interactive playground, which is quite common for a lot of design systems, and then all the variant sizes, etc., and then all the tokens that relate to a button down here, and um, and I'll go to the card later because uh, it will be really cool if uh, if at this point maybe Esther could um, demonstrate the workflow because people are probably wondering well how how does Figma tokens get into here how do you know how do you do that um, unless there's any questions or anything Mike and Esther want me to uh, point out at this at this stage maybe I missed something we needed to talk about no no we can. We can go through the the pipeline first and and kind of have some idea how that connects. Maybe you want to jump a little bit into the in the into the actual framer file, right? Like um, oh yes, yes, yeah, uh, and, yeah. Uh, I'll give a an overview there. So here we are in the framer file. These are all the pages on the left hand side. So you know, if I was to compare this to something like zero height, right? Like I've got a I've got a lot of these zero height sort of features and more. Um, but you know, Framer can also connect to a CMS, right? You, you might be wanting content for or whatever CMS. And there's a number of them you can connect up via API. So uh, it can be a headless CMS. It doesn't have to look and feel like the CM, the content map, the design system while you're editing the content, right? So in some ways, it's more powerful to have, a, have something that's headless. Uh, if you if if we go down to say the button component here. Uh, let me see, where's the button? These are all the ones here. Button component. If I go up here, if I click on a button, on the right-hand side, you can see the props for the button. All of this is coming in from React. So here I am changing the, the label. Um, maybe I call it label instead of button X. Here I say, well, I want it to be disabled, enabled. I want it to be primary, secondary, or tertiary. I want it uh, to be large, small, etc. I want an icon on the left or the right. I want it to be active or inactive. I don't know why it says, well, maybe we've got a little bit of work to do there. Maybe it's clashing with this, right? So there you go. So it gives you an, an idea of, of what uh, Framer is. Um, you've got the ability to import code components, but also this is like a regular design tool too, right? Um, it isn't, hasn't taken off as much as Figma, Figma um, because I think it has this overlap between design and dev, but you can very easily copy and paste stuff from Figma, as I'll show you a little later on. Yeah, maybe before we dive into the pipeline, do you also quickly want to show how the how the token component works, so how we're actually yeah, sure. able to sure, quickly yeah. load the tokens from Figma tokens directly, or from basically from the repository, right, and and, and kind of feature yeah. specific sets of tokens. Yeah. So so this is a this is a component that. Um, uh, is just sitting on the left here. So if I was to just mirror what we've currently got here, uh, if I uh, go under assets at the bottom here, you've got me on my feet now. Hang on a second. Yeah, I think you can just copy paste. Chakra the docs, there you go. Uh -huh. Chakra docs, right? Yeah. So it's it's all automatically populated with something. But if I wanted to make it look identical to this one on the right here, um, it's a comp button, etc. So if I was to grab that one and I was to change it, I could even change it to something completely different, like border, for instance, right? And change the theme or, or, or decide on whether if I go back to color, because I know that one, right? Or button, for instance, you know, what's what's on a button? Uh, and, and this allows you down the bottom to select uh, lower level paths, like in this one, for instance, here we're going down to the token path, btn.primary, but that equally could be secondary. And we can see all the secondary colors or tertiary colors. And I imagine that you could even go to down to showing one, but why would you necessarily do that? I am not sure. Um, maybe. Um, so yeah, is that that okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, say? I think that adds a little context to how these tokens are working, right? Okay, cool. Or the documentation, yeah. Maybe you can um, <clears throat> uh, switch my, sh my screen off and hand over to Esther. Yeah, uh, you can share <clears throat> Esther. Sure. Thank you, Link. Um, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? 
Uh, yeah, we're still seeing link screen. Um, you maybe switch me off. Um, yeah, trying. Mm. Okay, I think I'm I mean, switched it to uh, Esther's uh, screen now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Esther, this is your screen, right? Yes. Uh, I'm on the right. Figma file right now. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, maybe. I think we're still seeing links screen over here. Yeah, yeah, oh. we we tried this earlier. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's like I've lost the uh, the 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 interface. If for, you give uh, me one moment, Mike, I can uh, probably fix this. Yeah. Ah, I think now it's fixed. Okay. Right. Go ahead, Esther. <laughs> yeah. So I'll also start with the Figma file. Um, as Link already mentioned, that we have taken the official uh, Chakra UI uh, file and we have tokenized some of the components. So we have the token sets over here, right? And now the question was, how do we take these tokens and put it onto the code components of Chakra? So um, as Mike mentioned, it's not a straightforward uh, theming as such, but what we did over here is uh, we have tried to override some of the theming with our own tokens. So let's say if we take the example of a button, we have the base styles, uh, which is corresponding with our Figma, Figma tokens and the Figma file. And then uh, we have taken the sizes, we have added our own sizes, uh, extra small to large, and we have added our own variants, which is like primary, secondary, and negative. Um, uh, right now, Chakra out of the box has solid outline and ghost. So as you can see over here, like this is actually taking all the tokens. For example, our primary default background, our Hoover background, and so on, right? And then what we have here is um, we are just uh, passing the props to the button and we're exporting our button chakra over here and uh and Esther, then this, quick yeah. question but are you showing figma or are you showing something else because we are seeing oh figma. sorry i was on the code yeah i started wondering about that uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it corresponds yeah. to what we were seeing on the yeah, screen we're only seeing the figma mm. okay sorry sorry let me check this again i probably have to share the screen instead of the window yeah It says, okay, I will just switch it because, um, yeah. Okay, I was actually here. I was, uh, yeah, I started to wonder that. Maybe you want to like, quickly recap on, on <laughs> that part. Yeah. 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 So, so we have a repository. Let me just start again, where this is the Figma tokens, all the tokens, which is residing, which we just opened up on Figma and we saw. So we have, uh, as you just saw the structure over there, we have the core tokens, and then we have the component tokens and the semantic tokens. It is all getting uh, directly linked. Uh, we are referencing this in Figma. Um, then I was just showing, going through the button um, theming actually. So over here in this button, uh, I was showing how we have the base styles, which is corresponding to all the uh, which is now getting over it in with all the tokens, uh, the button tokens that we just saw, and then the sizes, which we have from extra small to extra large, and it is taking the tokens uh, for the different properties. Then we have the variants, the primary, the secondary, and the negative. And here we are saying like for background, it is taking the token primary default background, and we have for active, uh, background color, text color, icon color, what are the tokens when it's disabled, when it's active. So basically what we are doing is we are injecting our tokens uh, into Chakra, the components. And over here we have the component and we are just overwriting the theme and saying that, um, and we are exporting it to Framer. So right now, if I, I might have to share again, to switch. Yeah, that's all right, I guess. 
So you're not able to share your whole screen, is it? Yeah, I'm having some problems with that. Um, so right now, if we see uh, the button, uh, for example, sorry. Uh, let's say let's say we see a card, for example, and uh, I would just like to show a small pipeline. And this is a little annoying because I have to switch. <laughs> but um, let me share Figma again. So, okay. So we have the Figma file over here with the component and I want to change something over here. I want to edit, let's say my, um, uh, okay, sorry. Do something like, Purple, for example, I'm just going to update this and you need to push. In. And if I update it here, it should also reflect on my Figma file. Right now, I'm just doing it for the default. And once I push this <coughs> to my repository, and while this is pushing, let me just share my other screen as well, which is here. Can you see the GitHub? Yeah, that's yep. doing fine. Okay, so I think it has not, it is still pushing. Okay. And now. Yeah, you might have to refresh this once. Yeah, yeah so I go. can see that uh, you can see my changes. If I go to actions, Okay, so I think one thing that I should mention is that we have a GitHub action running, which is basically every time I make a changes in my Figma tokens and push it to the repository, it would run a set of uh, actions, which is uh, basically changing the tokens <laughs> to what can be consumed by Chakra. And just wait for some time to it to run. Yeah, so there are a couple of steps going on here, right? Uh, the first thing that happens is that, like you know, the tokens are are pushed to the repository. Then, uh, you know, they are converted to a JSON format that Chakra can work with, and then from there, there there is a build process that runs, which is basically creating the the Chakra tokens in a in a Chakra format, which are then consumed by the Chakra components, and then the build process automatically. Uh, rebuilds Chakra as well and exposes that through the CDN. Yes. So uh, right now in Framer, we are consuming the tokens and uh, consuming basically the co Chakra components through a CDN, but um, it has some <laughs> caching issues. So what I will do is just kind of quickly change um, the commit hash the commit hash because it I think sometimes takes up to 24 hours. Uh, to that, that's of... that's just temporary, right? Like oh, once we've sorted that out, it'll be instant. Right? Yes. At some point. But yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, but as you the can CDN see, that... was not purging. Uh, actually, in the build process, we are purging <laughs> the CDN cache as well, but it wasn't working all the time. So for the sake of the demo, we just decided to add a hashtag yeah. in here, but this should be fully automated. Yes. Cool. So as you can see that I changed the default color of my primary button to purple and you can directly see here, which is also reflecting in Framer again. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about the pipeline. Uh, is there anything that you would like me to add over here? Any no, questions? I think that, that's good for now. We don't have any questions right now, but if people have questions, feel free. To add some questions in the Q&A, we can always dive, dive a little deeper into it. Uh, but for now, we can move on, Link, I think. Yeah, I'll stop sharing then. Yeah. OK. <coughs> OK, so I'm back in Framer. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we're all good. Yes, we okay. can. Uh, just uh, a, li a little bit to add to that. Uh, before I came to uh, the, the Figma tokens guys, I was playing around with um, some code that um, I'm going to get his name wrong because I always call him Cohen, but I know he's the, the, the founder of uh, Framer. I, it's Koku. How do you say his name, <laughs> Mike? 
Kun. <laughs> Kun. Okay, yeah. so Kun had a repo where he had ESM modules, uh, you know, you Im importing that. And I, that's what kind of got me pretty excited by it. Plus also uh, it was a repo that Jan did from Figma tokens too. And I was kind of merging those and then adding a whole heap of complexity with like, uh, Tailwind and the CSS modules and all this and, and trying to get uh, dev support and this crazy idea that I had. But uh, when the Figma tokens guys came on, they kind of cleaned it all up and um, yeah, which is fantastic. Um, so here we go. I wanted to kind of at this point, just show you um, uh, one particular page, which is the card page. And um, um, just to kind of give you an idea of, of workflow now, workflow could be, I don't know why I'm not seeing this in view. Oh, here you go. So um, just to give people a little bit of context about workflow, like that, that, com that component there is a design component in Framer. It's just what comes bog standard with the application. Looks pretty cool. Has some interactivity with it if, you, if you're playing it. So you get all this stuff outside the box, right? And Framer does a pretty good job of using things like Handshake and what have you. So you can like quickly get something like that directly into an application or a prototype. But the problem is, is that there's no, there's no, no token uh, connection with Figma tokens outside the box. So where's this, all these design decisions that have been made in Figma, how do they come across? So then, then what you have the opportunity to do is to actually copy and paste something from, from Figma. And this is literally a copy and paste job using copy paste HTML plugin uh, framer. It used to be called copy paste plugin, I think, or framer copy paste plugin, but now it's called HTML plugin. So uh, obviously this is HTML behind the scenes, um, but but it, it pastes nicely in, in framer like this. But again, there's no tokens um, because Figma tokens ain't going to be ported, right? I can't select this and, and trust that these are all hard hard coded values that have come across. There's no, nothing for me to kind of use. So a lot of opportunity for a wasted time between design and dev where you're trying to kind of align these two worlds. And, um, you know, uh, people might not realize how much time goes into those efforts where a designer gets very, very frustrated with what comes out the other end. Well, the developer gets very frustrated with it, with the designers because things keep changing, you know, like, uh, or, or, or they don't necessarily see that there's a problem with the visual elements when, you know, um, and that's why it's really important to have a developer that understands, has some sensibilities to do with design because, uh, you know, I work with a designer that now works for Canva, which is not surprising. He may be on the call, hi Fong, if you're there. And he would pick up things like, uh, this is one pixel outlink. Do you want me to change it? And I'd say, awesome, like absolutely awesome, like go for it. Or he'd add animation or certain bits and pieces. And from my perspective, you know, having a front-end developer that has those sensibilities means that they can kind of refine and put the icing on the cake and is a designer in their own right. So um, this, this one here is a combination of, right? Like we've got, we've got a, it, it's a frame of card on the outside, like a panel uh, that with the drop shadow on it. And then you've got a chakra button here I've introduced. And this stuff here is just copied and pasted from Figma, right? Which is, which is also good. So you have this kind of merging of worlds where, you know, if something, if the button's been developed and designed and it's not, you're not redesigning it and it's coded up, why not use it? Because it's interactive, right? In the form of a, a high fidelity prototype. And because it's already in code, like you don't have to, they ain't going to, this isn't a design you're handing across. You know, you're at some point, you know, you might, you if you don't get a 30, 40% increase in speed, you could get up to 85%. That's what I've experienced where, you know, or if the front end developer comes along on the journey with you and creates these things, it's already sitting there in code. And it's just a matter of focusing on back end orientated stuff. So you're sort of upstream in the front end design development tasks. This last one is, is, is um, uh, Esther put together and it's, it's made with all of the chakra components. So if I was to kind of, double click into this one, you can see on the right hand side, you've got all of the, 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 the props that have been exposed and you can override them uh, in Framer so that we can kind of uh, uh, adjust those at the card level above the parent level. And there's a text component and here, here's a button component, et cetera. So, uh, but the card on the outside, the actual uh, layout is all in Framer, right? Okay, so if I jump out, back out. Uh, if I was to select this now, you've got access not only to 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 this, but you can do things like, um, you know, switch off 
switch on an icon, for instance, maybe change the color to secondary, et cetera, for the second one. Now we haven't, of course, this needs to be a, 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 maybe a drop down, same button one, button two or something. So we just plop some stuff on here to, for you guys to kind of get an idea of what we're, what, where we're heading. Um, yeah, and, I think the, probably uh, the interesting thing to mention here is that, <clears throat> um, you know, Framer really allows us to lift props from nested components up to the top level, right? So when we yes. combine everything into a card, uh, it's really exposing all the props. So uh, from a prototyping point of view, that's great, right? We can kind of just see the card and we can add all these values to it. Uh, and it makes it really easy. And like I said, we can, yeah. it could probably be structured more or cleaned up. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think it's great, right? Because it makes it really easy to instantly see that what is it, what, are, what are all the configurable elements, uh, you know, on, on this set of components or on this pattern, yeah. right? So I think it's great. And, uh, and a lot of the designers, you know, they get, they get, may get frustrated and they feel kind of locked in if they're using a code component. But as you can see, I'm merging these different things, right? It's a designer and developer working together in a space where you're not only docu using it as a documentation tool, but using it as a, as a way of communicating design, design iterations as well. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be in the form of a, of a design system. This is just uh, those components are available for you to create another project and just start prototyping. At the bottom here, I've got just that um, component that I demonstrated before, but if I was to sort of doc start documenting the card and the comp then I've got full access here, you, rather than it would be in uh, component button, the developer would have created component card and then you can create all the, uh, all the, um, the documentation for the tokens sitting here uh, for whichever audience wishes to um, consume them. Um, yeah, I, I was planning on kind of building a card for you, but um, Esther did it or, or already. And um, as for time, we have, uh, it's 1.47 now. So um, maybe maybe that's enough. I mean, people know how to use prototyping tools. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's very similar to Figma. So it's no, I don't think there's much value in me showing that at this point. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, I think, I, I think that's good. Uh, maybe yeah. we can pause a little bit, see if, see if you have some more questions. There's one question there, which is maybe not directly related to uh, to, to, to Framer and, and the playground, but this is from uh, Natalia. Hello from Brazil. Hi, Natalia. Uh, so she's basically wondering, she says they have been using Chakra UI and <clears throat> um, um, yeah, I think if I summarize this, okay, so what she's basically saying is that uh, the design system I'm working on was first built with Chakra UI and currently we're reviewing all the tokens from Chakra and comparing to our data so we can have custom tokens, code, and uh, etc. I was thinking of progressively detaching our tokens and components from Chakra to be more custom to our context, but because I'm using Figma tokens plugin to review and document these changes and since this integration is now happening in the near future, and I think she's referring to the integration uh, of the UI library I was speaking about earlier with, with Chakra, should I consider mm -hmm. reconsider this decision? Uh, should I stick to Chakra's conventions and use Figma tokens plugin to customize them? <clears throat> so yeah, that's an interesting question because that's what we also struggled with, right? So the, right, right now, uh, Chakra does not really have its steaming engine set up uh, uh, in the right way, I think, for, for a design system. Uh, for example, if you look at how the components are structured right now, they, they literally have a prop, right, where you can push a color into a button and it can, and it can take any color from your base tiles. There, there, are no, there are no detailed semantics. There aren't any component-specific tokens. So what, what, we were, what we did was, first of all, we, we went through all the components and we actually added all those components, uh, component specific tokens uh, to the components, which was a bit of a pain. And that's where we started talking with Sejun and, and, and Chakra. And, and we were basically saying that, hey, can, <clears throat> can we have a default package or something, right? That exposes all these, uh, uh, you know, all these stylable elements of a particular um, uh, component and uh, uh, you know, basically allows us to, to instantly apply tokens on that rather than you know, having to go in there and apply all these CSS variables manually. Uh, and, I, and, and, and he said it was a really good idea. So that, that's what we're talking about right now. How can we approach that? How can we get some better semantics in place? How can we get component-specific tokens in place? And how can we make theming a lot easier? 
Um, <clears throat> that being said, is I think I, I still think you can use Chakra in its in, in its full glory right now, uh, and and define your own tokens. You can deviate from Chakra because at the end of the day, uh, you know it's porting, right? So you can create your own core, you can create your own semantics. <clears throat> Sorry, and 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 you can for now apply these uh, on your components using component specific tokens, and at some point Chakra, uh, you know probably you know, provide you with a more native way to connect to those. And at that point, it's really a remapping, right, of some of your semantics to, uh, you know, whatever the, the chakra tokens are going to be called right then. So, uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think you have to wait for it. You, you can, you can really start because the largest chunk of, of your work is really coming up with your own semantics, right, and your own identity on your component library. Uh, and then after that, yeah, it might be a, uh, you know, a bit of a migration to to port to the uh, chakra specific component tokens. Um, but yeah, that really shouldn't be a huge job. I would say, like you know, that's probably a day's work, right, to kind of get those tokens in place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hope that answers your your question. And um, <clears throat> yeah, if there's any follow up questions, please let me know. Then there's another question over here from Frank, uh, and he's saying when token updates are pushed to the Git repo. How does the published framer site update to use the new token package? Um, does it have to rebuild the published framer site as well? So to be honest, um, I think that's one thing we haven't really uh, done a deep dive uh, into. Uh, but considering it's importing a CDN link, I'm actually kind of expecting that framer is referencing the CDN link in the published website as well. Um, I'm going to follow up on this and we're going to try this out. Uh, I just kind of assumed that, but, but now that you mm -hmm. ask very specifically, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but technically speaking, yes, that's what should happen, right? Because we are exposing, uh, exposing it as a package on the CDN uh, and that, that's really being used in Framer. But, but it could very well be that Framer is actually you know, compiling it after that into something else, uh, which might be versioned. So uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, do you have any idea on this link? Do you, do you know this top of mind, or is this something we got to check out? No, here? Um, not really, other than the fact that you know I've I've been publishing updates, and that as soon as we make them uh, from Framer, I uh, haven't had uh, issues. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think it would sound kind of dangerous if you were able to kind of uh, you know make a change independent <clears> of Framer, and then it would automatically be seen as a published site without going through that publishing process. Uh, because it's like you know you want to be able to control that right yeah i'd imagine as some mm -hmm. workflow so i don't think it would work purely from that protection perspective you know of what's got what's actually yeah. live you know? <laughs> yeah well outside of the framework context of course if we were to publish tokens to the cdn uh it would actually be live instantly right so uh, mm -hmm. but yeah i'm not just questioning that in the framework context because yeah. um yeah, I guess they, 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 they wouldn't be exposing those modules directly, right, on the website. So we might have to publish. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Good, uh, good one, Frank. I think we, mm. we still got to check this out. And, and I just want to iterate on this again, right? This is, you know, this was a bit of, of a wild idea when, when we first started talking about it. <clears throat> I was seriously questioning, you know, the limitations of Framer and, and, and the ability to actually, you know, port a UI library like, like Chakra into it. Um, so, you know, this, this, this is really an exploration of, of creating a different place, a different approach, right? Kind of stepping out of the traditional avenues of, of doing this. And I think it's really interesting. I think there's a lot of work to be done still. Uh, and, and, and I also, yeah, I, I would really like it, uh, you know, if, there, if there's people here today or watching this later on YouTube, right? Um, that, that, that see merit in, in this kind of an approach. It would be really great to, to get a couple of more people on board to contribute, to think along, to brainstorm, right? Like, you know, how, how could this evolve towards the future? um yeah so yeah um, yeah and, and already we've got a, a pretty good um community i'm not sure how many people on on board know much about merkel but um merkel's mm -hmm. part of densu it's pretty pretty huge company and we're kind of like the ux kind of xd kind of arm to uh, densu so between densu merkel and uh you know figma tokens and the interest we have from uh the framer uh community and chakra you know it's a kind of bit of a winning combination, I'm hoping, because I mean, the idea of Figma tokens is really to be used uh, within a design agency sort of setting. Um, and so we're a big design agency and um, we definitely see the benefit. So yeah, um, would love to have more people help with this effort. 
it's, yeah, it's and great. it's been great, right? I think you know you started talking a bit about it on the on the uh, Discord server of of Framer, and there's a bunch of people giving ideas. We actually found out that somebody else was already working on on getting Chakra into Framer. So I yeah. can definitely see there's a growing interest of of kind of unifying these worlds, right? Having your UI library in there and like you know being able yeah. to connect from Figma, maybe use Figma for explorations, right? But then also be able to put it together really quick, um, you know, in 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 something like a prototyping tool where 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 we can actually build experiences and 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 have a much more flexible way of doing this, actually u- using the code components, right? I think that's one of the often one of the fundamental flaws that you know we we are prototyping in design. Uh, where design is not fully linked to code. And then, then you know, finally, there are all these little differences between our code components. But when we actually prototype with code components, uh, it comes much closer to the real experience, right? And I think that's what we're after. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, if you can start a, an, an exploratory phase, you know, even pre-product, you know, what's an idea that a designer, developer, and someone from business have, you know, they could put a, a prototype like this together, use back by design system within a, say a Google sprint, right? It's been a couple of days, at the end of a Google sprint, putting a prototype together. And if you suspend disbelief and you say, look at this, how easy is that to sell that concept to, to business, you know, to be funded or to a client to expand uh, the, 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 the idea rather than it being a small idea, it's a big idea, right? That you're trying to articulate. And it's the whole kind of reason why I'm do, doing this is to, is to empower those more creative people uh, that often don't necessarily have a, a way of communicating the right way to business. But if you actually show something tangible, a creative person uh, that's maybe normally on, a, on, on some sort of neuro, neuro, neurodiversity sort of range you know they're normally the most creative people dyslexia or or or, or asperger's or something like that um so you know this is a way of people to add a communicate in a medium they understand right uh, a designer and a developer coming together to make something tangible and i think that says uh, design systems is should be to help people design and, and not about documentation not not controlling those creative people yeah that's awesome yeah um, I think there's another question in the chat as well. Uh, I noticed from Jared. Uh, is there a way to add the tokens as an override inside the smart component? Yeah, I was just trying to interpret this. Um, so when you're saying a smart component, yeah, I, I, I don't think we can override. So I, I, you, I think you're referring to the components in Framer, right? Um, you might you might want to elaborate a little bit on this uh, in the chat, Jared, if you don't mind. But uh, right now, uh, Framer does not really have any support for tokens as such, so uh, we we cannot do direct overrides from a token point of view uh, in Framer. Uh, Link, uh, are we able to um, over make other overrides on on the components itself. So can, can can we actually change a color on a chakra button, or is that kind of limited right now uh, on the implementation of the code component? Yeah, I'm, actually... I'm, yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure. I'd have to would have to get back to you on that one. Maybe uh, if you leave your details, we can or connect with us on Figma tokens Slack. Then we can we can address this. We're sort of running out of time now, so <laughs> maybe yeah. I yeah, so no, that. I think from understanding the question now, so he's basically saying, so yes, uh, I, I could design the smart component, then I could add variables for certain props and then add an override that links links it to a token, right? So uh, yeah, like, um, I, I don't think this is possible right now. We were actually really exploring, uh, so a little context about us, right, as Figma tokens. So, um, um, you know, Figma tokens is, is, is one part of the package but that everybody knows right now, but Obviously, I've and I've been, been saying this right. The vision is a lot larger. Like we would love to connect to all these other tools. Uh, like you know, we've been talking with Framer as well. Like kind of trying to figure out the possibilities of getting tokens in there uh, in, in in a native way or or through another plugin. Uh, Framer told us that you know probably somewhere next year they're going to open up their uh, you know their plugin ecosystem. So that'd be really exciting. It'd be really great to like kind of have a plugin in there like Figma tokens or maybe Framer tokens, whatever it be called then. Um, you know, and, and, and have have those things in there and, and also out of frame, right? All these other platforms that are there. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I'd love to to talk about this. Uh, you know, we have we have a Slack channel uh, for, for behind the system. So you can join us there. If there's a lot of people who are interested, I would love to create a dedicated channel uh, to this kind of a workflow, uh, you know, on our Figma token Slack. And um, 
yeah, just allow people to to share ideas and to evolve this together, right? So I think Link, maybe you want to explain this as well. You know, we are, we've open sourced this, right? Which is really amazing, and we would love to see people contribute. So maybe you can quickly highlight those things before we. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, anyone that wants to contribute, I mean, with this 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 uh, slide deck could be made uh, available. It's in Figma. Also, there's the YouTube channel as well. Um, you can find me. Um, uh, on the Figma token Slack or my or, or email me at, at Merkur on the front page. Um, there's the Figma file we're working on. Uh, this is a remix uh, link here. Uh, the repo is uh, currently on Esther's. We did have this as part of Merkel's um, um, Azure repo at that point, but uh, um, we've kind of had some technical difficulties, so we've moved it to this space. And I think it's good that it's open source for a while. Uh, from a Merkel perspective, no doubt we'll have our own spin on it at some point and a certain amount of things will be done internally. But uh, for this to grow, I think it's great for everyone if it's open source. And then the Framer link is here as well. Um, sorry, I, got, I mixed up the remixes link is this one. Down, down here is all the technology that uh, there's probably more as well. But if you look in the package.json file, you'll see stuff uh, behind the scenes. Um, but uh, most of it's uh, here. I think I left out style dictionary, which is pretty <laughs> crucial um, because it's not just about uh, doing something React. If you're using style dictionary, this design system can drive you know, iOS or Android or whatever st style dictionary uh, transformations have happened. Um, so I think that's a good thing to note because people might think this is all about React. It's not. It, it's uh, you, you, maybe you're connecting with a system like Sitecore, or whatever, and the only thing that uh, Sitecore consumes out of the design system is design design tokens uh, via style dictionary, and that's it. it doesn't resume uh, consume the uh, React components. I think that's all, all I have. Um, I, I, I wanted to kind of just move to. Uh, oh, we had lots of questions along the way. Um, yeah, they're happy for some more, but I'm just trying to push things along because it's now over time. And I, I personally just like to really thank the guys at Figma Tokens for all the effort they put in. They've been super uh, cool and just jumping in and and um, making this happen. Um, I really struggled to kind of get uh, technical people to to help with this. You know, um, as a designer, stroke developer, often there's this chasm in between, and and maybe you don't get the attention from designer or dev. But I, I openly, openly want to bring these worlds together, so I really appreciate them coming close. Uh, Simon also is the uh, moderator on uh, on Discord. He's been helping out in the last few days, and then um, Dave, Sam, and Aaron, and um, two A's in Aaron. Sorry, Aaron and Chris from Merkel, and the audience. Thank you very much for watching. So that's my little um, my little wrap up. Uh, over to Mike and uh, Robert. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Link. Um, and, and yeah, like like you mentioned, it's 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 been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, exploring some different avenues, working together on this. It's been, I think it's been months since we've been talking about it and in the last couple of weeks kind of working towards this live stream. Um, yeah, so if there are no other questions, I think we're going to slowly wrap up the uh, live stream of today. Um, yeah, like, like, like we mentioned before, we have the behind the system Slack channel. Robert posted a link to that as well in the chat. Um, if you have any more questions for Link, I'm sure he will be happy to answer those uh, on, on our Slack. So at Link, uh, 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 you, you can find him there. Um, and yeah. yeah, if you are interested in contributing, uh, you know, to this idea or helping us mm -hmm. take this forward, um, you know, um, yeah, we, we'd be happy to talk about this, and we, yeah. we might be able to set up a Zoom sometime with a bunch of people who are interested and kind of see like mm -hmm. how we can do that or take it for the deep dive. Mm -hmm. So that'd be really cool. May I just um, may I just add briefly, like if anyone, because yeah. uh, there's some people out there, this might be too overwhelming, you know. Like, uh, I mean, that's what that's what we're doing at Merkel. We help organizations that that, that may not necessarily have all the skill set, and you know, we're we're happy to work with with people. It would be uh, very, you know, um, just just contact me, and uh, yeah, if you if you'd feel this is too much for you to do yourselves. Oh, that's great. All right. Yeah. Well, th well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Esther. Thank you, Robert. Uh, I think this was a great one. It was really exciting. Um, I don't see any further questions or, on the Q&A or the chat. So um, yeah, let's call it a day for today on this stream and see you all next time. Thank you so much. And bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining, Thanks, everyone. guys. Bye-bye. See ya.